All right, folks, Kids Cubed is on a mission to introduce youth to science through hands-on learning and fun. In the communities of color, kids seldom have access to resources required for science experiments and educational tools such as the internet or computer access. Ahmed Muhammad, creator of Kits Cubed, wants to make science both fun and affordable. Uh, he is one of the business owners who is on the app Next Door, and he joins us right now um, in our Marketplace segment, sponsored by Next Door. Um, their purpose is to cultivate a kind of world where neighbors can rely on one another, where all feel welcome. Uh, all right then, Ahmed, so first of all, uh, when, did you start, when, when did you start this business? What's up, Mr. Martin? Uh, I started Kits Cubed April of 2020. That's when I was babysitting my younger niece and nephew when they told me that they hated science. So when they told me that I went to my room and I designed experiments for us to do with stuff we could find around the house. Like we made a potato battery, a sundial. Uh, we did experiments with leaves from the trees in the backyard. And they loved the experiments and the joy that they felt is what I wanted to share with other children like them, other children in my community. And that's how Kids Cube got started. So obviously we were in the middle of the pandemic and so you had uh, lots of time at home and they had lots of free time as well. Yes, that, that's very true. Uh, when, you know, going online, the schools and teachers were still shuffling, trying to figure things out. So that left a lot of free time to explore other other avenues, other interests. And for me, that was starting a company. Uh, and so uh, how do you then begin to uh, assemble the kits? I mean, are they all prefabricated? Uh, you do them individually. Uh, and then how did you then begin to build the business? So uh, for me at first, it was just like buying. So I designed the experiments and I had buy all the materials from like suppliers. And then I would actually like put them together myself, like in my room, like I would just tear up my room or downstairs. I would have my mom or my sister help me and the house was just a mess. But uh, we would just put together these experiments and in each experiment, I mean, each kit has three experiments and has all the materials that students need to actually uh, conduct the experiments and it has instruction manuals that we design also. And I was just, I went on Nextdoor, actually. Nextdoor was the first platform that I used to get the word out there. I was just go um, in my neighborhood and sell these kits. And I was I sold more. I was able to purchase more materials to make more kits and give them out to uh, other children. And I was just keep building on top of that. And I was able to hire more and more people, which has been a, it's been a steady growth. Since. So, are, so are you giving the kits away or are you selling the kits? A little bit of both. So the idea behind Kids Cubed is that the students and families who can afford to buy the science kits do buy the science kits. And then the money that we generate from that and from donations and from grants, since we're a nonprofit, that goes towards bringing science kits to schools and students who otherwise wouldn't be able to afford them. So, um, so, so it's April 2020. Uh, yeah. So now we're talking about 15 months or so. And so... Uh, how many kits have you sold and, and what do they cost? So each kit costs $15 on our website. I think, I think one of them, like our newest one, the model lung is only $10. But uh, for the most part, they're all $15 with three experiments in them, hence the name Kits Cubed. And uh, we've been able to, we've been sold thousands of these, thousands of the thousands of these on the website. And um, we've distributed tens of thousands across the country. Really? Yes. Uh, so, because uh, you talked about your house being a mess, so how are y'all doing it now? Uh, are you? <laughs> I mean, obviously, you probably had to move uh, production out of the house, uh, otherwise, uh, your folks were going to go crazy. Oh, my mom was already going crazy with it, but we have a we have a warehouse, like a, like a little office space, because we're since we're a nonprofit, we're actually fiscally sponsored by a larger nonprofit called Seneca Family of Agencies. And they put us up with an office space and a warehouse, which we're carrying out all of our operations as of right now. Uh, and so in addition to the kits, you also have uh, merchandise as well. Uh, you oh yeah, got, you wearing, got, one, you got, wearing one right now. <laughs> all right, gotcha, got your t-shirts got your t there. Uh, and so how have you used, uh, uh, how have you used the app next door to build your business? Uh, I joined next, next door a few months ago uh, and really, uh, for folks, it, it, it's a social media app which allows for you to actually connect with uh, your neighbors, uh, folks uh, who literally are all around you. And so how have you used the app to, to actually build out your business? 
Right. So when I first came up with the idea of next of Kids Cubed and wanted people to know about it, Nextdoor was the first platform I went to, to to share that idea because I felt like the people who I could most easily get to were my neighbors. And I'd never actually really connected with my neighbors like that before. So I went to Nextdoor and I put out the whole idea of Kids Cubed. I linked their website, what I was trying to do. And uh, I just blasted it to like all the neighborhoods in Oakland, California. And uh People just started reaching out that way. They reached out through next door, through email, or by phone. And it was just a really great platform to connect me with uh, other people who I wouldn't otherwise not known or talked to. So you were uh, so so again, so so starting the business as opposed to uh, you trying to figure it out, you, you said, hey, let me connect with where I am. And so when you started that, when you started uh, letting the neighbors uh, know around you, uh, how how did it spread? Uh, how, how did it spread beyond that? Well, then, you know, I, I posted on Nextdoor, and then so different neighborhoods, different communities are talking about it, and then it spread a lot, like they're reposting it on Nextdoor, or it's a lot of word uh, that people are just saying it to their families or to their other friends, a lot of uh, word-to-mouth information spread. So and- I guess that, that was a lot of it. And then also, like, um, with next door when it would next door helped spread the word initially and then we were able to get media people on it so like kids Q was then in the news like we've been we've been across different news stations both locally and nationally and i say it all started with next door that was the first platform and see that's the thing that, that I, I i'm always trying to explain to people you have to take advantage of your existing networks mm-hmm. uh whether you're talking about organizations uh, whether you're talking about your church groups or whatever. And a lot of people make this, I think, they go, well, you know, I don't know anybody when the reality is uh, if you use social media in a smart way, it allows for you to be able to build it. And for you, by starting with your neighbors, by connecting them through next door, uh, you could actually talk to them. You can correspond with them. You can actually del- hand deliver these kids, uh, if you will, and then as it begins to build and expand, essentially word of mouth allows you to actually to get bigger. Yeah. And, you know, I wanted Kids Cube to be a com- really community based organization. So what better place than to start in my neighborhood? And that next door was perfect for that. Questions from our panelists. Teresa, I'll start with you. Hi. Uh, well, one, congratulations. Uh, I, I think you are opening the door to uh, many are looking up to make the product. Um, what what advice do you have for uh, to all others who uh, who want to go to Stanford? Oh, uh, you know, a lot of people have asked me for like advice, but it sort of it, I haven't found out like the the best way to put it really what to say. But I would say my, my advice, if you're trying to go to Stanford, like how I am in the fall, or if you're trying to start your own um, company, I would say really just what is required of you is just putting in the work each and every single day and drawing in on your community and in, on your talents and trying to learn from as many places and people as possible. I think what allowed me to uh, accomplish some of the things that I've been able to accomplish so far is really just learning from all of the people around me. So if I had any one piece of advice, I would say to, to be a sponge and to absorb as much as you can and then apply it as well. All right, Mustafa. Yeah, Brother Muhammad, congratulations. You know, I, I can imagine the thousands of kids who uh, are going to STEM because of what you're doing. My question for you would be, over the next you know, year or two years, where do you see um, your business going? Oh, that's a good question. You know, I dev- we definitely have some plans for it, but I would say our, our most like immediate next like our next step is um, we have a project where we're going to be delivering, we're going to be donating 10,000 science kits to students in Oakland. So that's going to take some time. That's going to definitely be like a lot of our next focus. And we're just going to keep looking for ways to expand. One of the ways to expand is by increasing the types of kits that we have out there. So that way students are able to learn about all aspects of science, more than just the four kits that we have <coughs> right now. Uh, another way is to inc- to impact students through with science, but through ways that aren't just science kits. Because, yeah, the science kits are fun. They're cool. But there's other ways you can tap into students. Like we just 
finished running a summer camp at the West Oakland Youth Center. It was about 60 kids. It was a week-long summer camp, and uh, the kids loved that in-person experience with a teacher and demos that they wouldn't get to try at home. So also expanding that into uh, after-school programs or more summer programs in the next year or two, and just keep building our team and keep putting science into as many students as we possibly can. Ben, your question for Entrepreneur Muhammad. Congratulations, first of all, young brother. This is amazing what you've accomplished, um, and we should celebrate you for that. I, I'm curious, when you came up with the idea, where did you go to get the ideas and the schematics and, and, and to just the entire framework for what you built? And then tell us how we can support what you're doing. Okay. Uh, so it was definitely, I went a lot online and researched a lot because there's just so many, there's so many resources out there, you know, talk to, to my parents, my parents uh, are involved with business, talk to different teachers who could give me advice on the, the actual educational side of the kits, talk wow. to uh, different wholesale suppliers who actually supply educational materials for uh, other similar organizations. So I would say it goes back to what I was saying earlier with my advice on just trying to absorb from as many places as possible. So I, I couldn't really point out one single place. It was just a lot, a lot of mentors and a lot of teachers around me who were able to support me and, and this idea and this project. And I would say to support Kids Cubed, you know, obviously one of the one of the best ways to support us is by sharing our website, sharing our uh, organization, www.kitscubed.com. K I T S C U B E D dot com. And we're a nonprofit. We accept uh, donations, tax deductible donations. So every single dollar that comes through Kids Cubed is going towards providing a science kit for a student who can't afford it. So I'll say those are the, those are some ways you can support us. And just following our journey, following us on Instagram at Kids Cubed, just, uh, just being there for us. Uh, you talked about uh, thousands of videos, excuse me, thousands of. Um uh, kids you sold. So, you know, what, five years from now, where do you see uh, Kids Cubed? Ooh, five years from now, I see kids. We're based in Oakland right now, but I see it spread all across the country. Like, we've sent kids across the country, but I want us to have a chapter in every state. And we're really, really bringing science kits to all the communities that need them. And then expanding past just the United States globally, too. Like I said, we don't want to stop until every single child has had the opportunity to explore science because uh, science we're, we're, we're lacking science resources. So uh, in five years, I just want to see, I want to see millions of kids with our science kits. And I didn't ask this, uh, you started uh, again uh, in the house, but uh, uh, how many people do you have working with you uh, on this? How many people now uh, working with the nonprofit? I want to say I have 15 employees officially like, on payroll. And then many, many more volunteers. I'd say upwards of 30 or 40 volunteers. So it's a lot. Like I said, it's a lot of people backing this mission to bring science kits to, his, to, to the community. And it's also, it's important to note, this is all youth-led. So everybody on my team is an Oakland teenager or a Bay Area teenager who either just graduated like I did, like they might be first or second year college, or they're still in high school. So it's really our mission is to introduce youth to the wonders of science through fun, affordable, and accessible means. And we also uh, want to do that from a youth lens. All right, then. Ahmed Mohammed, we're surely appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Again, folks, uh, you can go to uh, his website. Uh, it is Kits Cubed, K-I-T-S-C-U-B-E-D dot com. Uh, and we surely appreciate it. Thanks a lot. For sure. Thank you for having me. All right, then. And folks, if you want more about uh, the uh, app next door, check this out. One of the most stressful days of my life was when this one got out. I chased after her as best I could, kind of fell over and broke my wheelchair. I was able to get back home and make a post. Within about five or so minutes, I had three or four different people come into the rescue. One woman stopped traffic, just drove her right back to the house for me. It was, it was a very emotional day. Over a period of 10 years, my neighborhood went from being almost 98% black to being 98% white. So all of a sudden, oh God, I'm the suspicious looking black man. 
I posted on Nextdoor that I no longer felt comfortable walking in this neighborhood. The response I got was hundreds and hundreds of neighbors offering to walk with me. This experience moved me and changed the way I saw humanity. At Nextdoor, we come to work every day to help cultivate a kinder world. We want to make sure that everyone has a neighborhood to rely on. When we started this company, we felt that technology had an important role to play in bringing communities and neighbors together. We knew that having the support of your neighbors was critical. And when I found out I was becoming a father, I panicked. What am I going to feed this kid? I posted, hey, any other gardeners who might have extra soil, seeds, equipment, and they came up from everywhere. As human beings, we want a sense of safety and anything that gives us that sense of connection. You drive through a neighborhood and you see houses and bricks, but really what you have is people, business owners and entrepreneurs. We know that the locals are what keep our restaurant going. When somebody says that they enjoy our restaurant, it brings us business. It's been really cool being able to cheer on your neighbors as they open up the next coffee shop. When Hurricane Harvey first hit Houston, I realized that Nextdoor was much more than just a day-to-day -day utility. It was a lifeline to the community. The neighbors have been using that Nextdoor app to coordinate evacuations. When the pandemic started, people did have the urge to help, but often they didn't know who to help or how. Our next door group took off explosively. Just after a year, we had over a thousand members. Next door evokes a sense of pride in your neighborhood, and we know that people globally are craving for that. We hosted our music video on the next door app. A lot of people in the area liked it. <laughs> and people are beautiful. Let's go see the beautiful. Keep them rhythm for the box we got. Stay on the drums. I think the video meant a lot to our neighbors because it portrays the Cascade area in a positive lighting. At the end of the day, and this is a business model about people <laughs> and neighborhoods and communities, wouldn't it be beautiful to connect Wall Street to Main Street and to do well and do good at the same time? It's going to be the legacy of 2020 that next door put neighbors together for a cause and then forever. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you very much. It often starts online, but we know that it continues into the real world, and that is the superpower of next door. All right, folks, all you got to do is go to the Google Play Store or go to uh, the uh, iOS store to download the app.